So I always wear a mask when I deal with powdered dye. So I'm not going to be talking too much. I have one of these dust masks. You know, the dye's caustic. You don't want to breathe it in. So I'm putting it on now, so I'm not going to talk too much. So we'll go ahead and uh, get going and just dye this now. I do like to use a rack on this one. I don't use a, a gutter because the gutter will have the muck run down the bottom pleats. On this one, I just want to have nice, crisp dye lines and I'm gonna incline it when we're done. I leave distance between the colors so they don't blend too much, especially because I'm using golds, yellow, and grape on this one. But I'm using the raven between the yellow and the grape on, so that the, uh, the yellow will flow into the black and not make too much muck with the purple. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to use a lot more of the brighter yellows than you do any darker colors because they tend to get buried by everything else. <coughs> Excuse me. Must have inhaled some dye. And I keep the black dye quite a bit away from the yellow so it doesn't dominate it and cover it up. And I scoop it back if it falls. It's going to bleed anyway when I put an ice cube on there. You want to be very careful with the amount of black you use. Black, you know, is very strong and it will overpower all the other colors.
You want to make sure you get plenty on the edges too, not just in the middle, so that it's even. Try to make your die as even as possible all the way across. And I pat it down over here so it doesn't tumble off. And I'll leave a good amount of space. This is the marigold. I'll leave a good amount of space between the, the grape and the marigold. This color is kind of a barrier between the brighter yellows and the grape because it'll make a, a mud. These spoons I use, this is a uh, chemist spoon. It's a pretty, pretty cool thing. They come in a set. All different sizes, shapes. It's pretty nice to have a set of these. You can get them on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Try to get a nice even layer all the way across. And the clear yellow will get wiped out by the other colors, so don't be afraid to put an extra. I think yellow is the cheapest color you can buy anyway.
And I did get a little speck of black over here. I wipe my spoon off with a rag, wipe it off with the paper towel, and then I'll try to scrape that little speck back. We don't want black showing up places shouldn't be. And on the, I'm on the shoulder seam right here, and so the stitching there, it's pretty thick, so I add extra dye whenever I come on, like the shoulder collar seams. Try to get it to penetrate real well into that. Remember to always wipe your spoons off in between colors so you don't contaminate. Whatever my brightest color is, I always add a lot more and try to keep its distance from the other colors so that it shows up. And then I put a big pile in there and I just even it out with the spoon. Try to make it an even layer. We're going to lose some, you know, into the pan below and it's to be expected. Very cautious with the black because it will overtake everything. And the purple as well, any of the dark colors.
As you can see, this one pleat dipped, so I'm going to grab it and bring it up. So you want to really be careful. Same here. You want to grab your shirt and then very carefully pull it up. I'm going to go back and add some black over here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, the black. Because there's an area of the a pleat that didn't get it. It was dipped. For some reason, my dyes from Dharma come kind of moist. It can be convenient, though, to kind of wipe it onto the edge there and it stays. If it was real powdery, it'd fall off. Okay, that's the die placement by rack. And that will hold this in place while I get the die. And I place my die, just these refrigerator cubes on this style of a die. This is my Supernova loose tie design is what I call it. So it allows the die to flow. The reason I call it Supernova one is because I do a lot of fan folds. And I, a lot of the fan folds, you want them tight. You want to tie the sinew really tight. Well, in the Supernova ones, you don't because you want to flow. You want the spikes. So let me get my eyes now, and I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so I just used these half moon, cube, half moon cubes that came out of my uh, refrigerator and I just placed them on it right on the actual die. Looks like I lost some sodash up here. I can put more on on top of the ice. I'm, I said more on. <laughs> Sometimes that's what I feel like when I'm doing these things. You want to make sure they don't slide down and mess up your carefully placed die that took all that time to place. That would be a disaster. I like to do a pretty steep incline for these. It adds that nice flowy effect. Seems like flow's the thing now. Everybody wants flow and I'm one of those. Love my dies to flow. I have kind of a crammed area here. It's hard to get everything to uh, to get my body where I want it to be to place this, so I'm reaching. <laughs> yeah, it's really difficult to do the way I have this set up in my way. I hope everyone can see. Like I say, this is my first live. 
It's only my second video that I've done live. I did one with Scott Rad Dyes Walker once. That was a lot of fun. Decided that's how I do it from now on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try something else. So when I do this ice dyeing, I monitor all of my dyes. Like this one, see, is already going. And I'll watch how much the, like this is black. I'll watch how much black flows compared to other colors. And I'll add more dye or ice to each color as it needs it. To each row of dye. I really monitor them so it turns out exactly how I plan. And that's not really true because nothing really ever turns out exactly how I plan, but hope for the best, right? Do our best and hope it all comes out. Okay, I'm not going to be able to do the rest of this shirt on this video tutorial, but you can see how I do it. I just place it down and then I'll I'll sprinkle a little bit of soda ash on top of the ice as well. See, I just sprinkle a little bit. To me, the expense of soda ash is nothing because if you don't have enough, you're screwed. A little bit too much doesn't hurt. So anyway, thank you for uh, joining this portion of the tutorial. I'll have a part two. And this is the trifold zigzag with, on incline die over ice. Or die under ice, DUI, die under ice. And I'll uh, go ahead and make a part two uh, once I wash this shirt out. Thank you very much for joining me.